and welcome to episode 18 of the Gaming Roundtable. I'm your host, Newton13, and with me today, well, may very well be some special guests. Just stay tuned. Today we'll be reviewing Half Minute Hero, which was released on the PSP uh, late last year, actually. Is this game uh, 30 seconds of awesome, or can we just not wait for it to end? Enjoy the show. Go, 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 go. It's your birthday. Newton. Newton. Newton, get up! What? What? What's going on? It's that time again, Newton. Ugh, already? Ah, do you think the shoppers would be tired of me panhandling by now? No. It's time for the third season of the Gaming Roundtable. What? But where's Raijin? I'm not starting until I see Raijin. That's just it, Newton. An evil lord has killed Raijin and is hiding in Waldo's forest. What? Raijin is dead? Afraid so, Newton. But you'd better get out there quick. You only have 30 seconds. But what about the- Did you hear me? Go! Go now! I have cast the spell of destruction and the world will end in 30 seconds. Killing that co-host from the mere bonus. <laughs> hey there! What? Who are you? Evil Lord, I shall vanquish you! Oh no, Newton, I am not the evil lord. But I can help you defeat him, but you only have 30 seconds, right? Well, 12 now. What's your point? I can stop the clock for you. See? Ah, well that's fantastic. You can keep the clock stopped while I go chase after Raijin's killers. Whoa well, there. I said I could help you, but we have to stop the birds again. What? I don't have time for this. What do you want? How much you got? What? I don't have any money. Are you crazy? Oh, no money? Well, forget it then. But I need more time. Crazy woman. Goddess, whatever! Help me! Ah, uh, the world is over and the show is starting! You know, the graphics for Half Minute Hero, it's kind of a mixed bag, actually. I can't say that they were stupendous because they have this beautiful artwork as you come actually into the game, but when you start playing it, it is 100% 8-bit old school. Which is good, because that's what the style they were really going for, but I can't give this game a very high graphics score just because, well, it's old school. It looks good for what it is, but you know it could be better. For graphics, I give Half Minute Hero a 3 out of 5. As far as sound is concerned on Half Minute Hero, I really enjoy the soundtrack. Yeah, the sounds are a little repetitive, but it doesn't get annoying ever. And I really like the sound effects. In general, I think the game has a really nice flow, and it couples well with the old-school style of the game. Half Minute Hero is just one of those games that has a perfect soundtrack for what it is. Sound? Just as good as the graphics, but still old-school. 3 out of 5. Now for gameplay, Half Minute Hero, I gotta say, I'm a big fan of old school RPGs, and this game really hit all the, the marks that it needed to hit. It's fast paced, it's fun, there's mul a multitude of game modes, although you probably spend most of your time in Hero 30, but as you unlock it, there's a continuing story throughout every game mode in Half Minute Hero. As for gameplay, five game modes at least to keep you occupied. Five out of five. Now let's take a trip back in time to our retro reflections with my special guest, Decker Shadow. Hey Newton, I've been playing a lot of Fantasy Star 2 recently, actually. Fantasy uh, Star 2? That's a classic yeah. game. How does that compare to Half Minute Hero? Well, Fantasy Star 2 was a rather innovative uh, role-playing game for its time, but it stuck very 
strongly to the RPG formula for console games at the time as well. That being top-down view with the with random battles and a very strict experience system and tough enemies. The first thing they tell you in the game is just to head out to the Biosystems Lab. If this were a modern RPG, Biosystems Lab might be 15 feet away and easy peasy. But uh, you have to go long ways before you come even close to the Biosystems Lab in Fantasy Star 2. And if you even just try to walk to the first dungeon or the next town and just straight walk out to do it, you'll get killed. You'll lose. So solid game recommended on your part? Oh, absolutely. If you play only one Fantasy Star game this year, maybe Fantasy Star Zero, but Fantasy Star 2 is good as well. All right. And that was Decker's Shadow from Retro Reflections. Thank you, Decker, for your input. Anytime, dude. And now it's time for one of my favorite sequences. This is the one where we talk about what's currently going on in the gaming industry. Do you know they're acting like it's down now? You it. Do you know what you're acting like it's down now? You it. Do you know they're acting like it's down now? You it. Okay. Now this month's question is all about, actually, the revival of the adventure game genre. If you've been following uh, recent game releases, you've probably noticed the Quantic Dream's Heavy Rain, which is a PlayStation 3 exclusive. This particular game takes adventure game in a whole new direction. Now, because this game is so polished, we asked many of our guests, including myself, what will this do for the gaming industry? Will it open a floodgate of new polished adventure games, or are we just going to see a bunch of Dragon's Lair clones? And speaking of, for the first time on the Gaming Roundtable show, Allow me to introduce Decker Shadow. I think that we're going to see a lot more narrative-driven game experiences, but most of them won't be nearly as polished as a Heavy Rain. Now, what's your take on this anime, lady? Well, between Heavy Rain and Bayonetta Blues coming out around the same time, I'm seeing that the game is getting a little bit darker, a lot more action filled a lot more sword explosions. So I am thinking that it is going to be getting a little bit darker. But sometimes that's not always such a bad thing. We're going to like a more action-filled age. I am looking forward to a lot of games that are going to be coming out. With games like Heavy Rain kind of bringing the adventure game genre to a more polished sheen, I'd like to say I want to see more games like this, and I hope it does kind of open the floodgates for some other developers to think about games designed in that type of criteria. The only thing that I worry about is much like any other any other spin-off game, it's going to be one of those games that's just not as good as the original. I mean, take a look at half of the Pokemon games that are spin-offs. Pokemon Dash, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, games like these are not as good nearly as the original, and of course they don't hold a candle to it. Now granted we're talking different genres here, but do we want Heavy Rain? Yes. Do we want Dragon Slayer? No. How many people want to kick some ass? When you get to Hero 300, trying to find the path to Violet Castle, I know it seems very silly, but once you pass the one threshold, if you try to get to Violet Castle, you'll end up going around in a circle wondering how come I can't access it. Well, actually, if you look real closely at the, top, the upper right hand corner here, and then you just scroll down, you'll notice there is a direct path to Violet Castle. Very easy to access, surprisingly. Tell me like it is, is. Like Overall, I give Half Minute Hero a 4 out of 5. Now this is a game that I certainly do recommend that you try. It's a really solid experience, and if you have a PSP, it's a game that you must own. It's cheap, it's fun, it's fast. Do you really need anything else when it comes to a portable game system? Okay, thanks for tuning in to episode 18 of the Gaming Roundtable. I hope to see you next time. Next time on the Gaming Roundtable, I'll be reviewing another game. Is it an RPG that's as good as Half Minute Hero or even remotely? Well, you tell me. And I'll see you next time. This is terrible. This is one of the worst catastrophes in the world.